Hello YouTube and welcome back to my second episode of Flutter Explained. Today's topic is the Future Builder and I will explain you based on this little weather app that you can see here, <clears throat> um, how you can use it and the, its benefits. So let's get started. So let's first begin as I always begin. Let's start with the boilerplating. Okay, so what you can see is uh, we have three different folders, models, screen, and services. And as always, the main.dart is just our material app with a basic theme and the home screen. And inside of the oops, home screen, you can see there is a build function with a scaffold with a nice little app bar for you guys. Welcome to the Flutter Explained and a body which just contains a container at the moment. So um, exactly. So what I created is a model which just has some information about the weather, which is the name, the city name more exactly, the temperature, the feeling of the temperature, and a fa factory that creates us from a JSON that we get somewhere uh, some specific uh, values so that we get the weather. And also we have a network service and the network service is a bit more complicated. We have here an open weather URL. So if you want to join me with that adventure, as always, there is the uh, GitHub repository. And you find here the uh, URL with an API key. And we receive now the um, weather information from there. And we get the response. And what we are doing is just we wait a bit that I can show you a spinner. And then after two seconds, we get the response and we create a weather object from it. And if this is not the case, we throw an exception. That's it for now. So, and what we are doing in the home screen now, we want to use this future because the weather network service, as you can see, returns us a future of weather. And our task now is to use that get weather data, extract the information and show a nice little UI for it. Okay. So to start off, we have to surround our container with a future builder. And that future builder is getting yellowish, if you can see that here. And that means we have a builder required. So, or at least we have a parameter required inside of that future builder. And we have to add the require argument. I do that with option enter on the yellow one and get now immediately the correct um, the correct uh, builder function. So we have already the context. And the second parameter that is very interesting for us is the asynchronous snapshot that we get here. And if we take a look into the API here for the async snapshot returns us an immutable representation of the most recent interaction with an asynchronous computation. That means we get returned, oh, sorry, uh, we get returned uh, something that it has the information if we got some say, things successful, if we got an error or none of both. So, and if we take a look into the snapshot um, properties, we have, for example, has data, data, error, has error, connection state, and so on and so forth. And for us, interesting for today is, for example, snapshot dot has data. And that will return always if we have data, so if we have uh, on success. Else if we check the snapshot for has error, which is nothing else than the error case, of course. And if none of both is applicable, we show currently a container, but we will change that to a, sorry, linear progress indicator and give it a value of null because we don't know when the network request will be finished. So and if you look into the app on the right side, you can see up here the nice little loading spinner. Okay, but we want to show something, right? If, we return, if the data getting returned from our asynchronous callback, we want to show something, right? And for that, we return here in has data an icon for now. And uh, this icon returns the icons and we want to check box it and giving them a color, the color is green, of course, because everything is green and successful, and the size is 128. And so this is what we return, an icon. And I hope if we get data now, we will show that little green one. So I 
rebuild with a, a state. And let's see if it happens. Ah, no, of course not, because we have a future builder, uh, but we didn't provide it a future for it. And we have the weather network service, and it contains the get weather data. And we have to provide a city for it. And for us, we return the city of Christchurch because they have currently nice weather. And now I hope we get our green tick, correct? So we make the call with the get weather data. We get return something back from the API and then we show our green icon. And I just put that in the center that it looks a bit better. And also that you get with alt enter on a widget, we get this nice little context menu where we can surround an existing widget with something else. So I take that one because in, if there is an error, we want to return also an icon, but this time we want to have an error icon and make it red. And in our network service to validate that it's working, we have to change the status code. And if everything works well, we can see now we get an error back and it fails. So I fix that right now. Now we have the information that we have a data from the future. We have the information that we have an error from the future and we have the information of a linear progress indicator. And with this, we have the ability to show our users exactly in which state they are currently in. The last step that we have to do now is to change our checkbox coloring into something beautiful that shows our weather data, right? So for that, we first want to show a text widget to check if our snapshot data has actually some really values for us. And that crashes right now because he don't, or the application don't know that this is a, um, actually a weather snapshot data and now we have to import the weather model and now we can say weather.name for example to receive the city that we are currently in or what we also can provide is the we get the temperature and say to string <clears throat> we should see 60.38 degrees at the moment so what we want to do is now return um, a good column good old column and in that column, we have some children and the children will be our containers, right? So we have a text widget with the weather.name, the city name. We have a text widget with weather.temperature uh, and the last uh, to string. And I want not just to string because I'm not sure what we receive from the API. So I say that we have at least two digits at the end. And the last thing that we want to show is an icon and the icon should be dependent on the weather dot temperature feeling. And if the temperature feeling is below, let's say five degree, then we show a cloud icon. Icons dot cloud, I hope that is there. Yep, here we go. And the color should be colors dot gray. And I think I make the size already a bit bigger because else what we have it for, right? And if it's warmer than the five degrees, uh, yep, if it's warmer than five degrees, I would like to show an icon. I can start sunny. And the color is of course yellow. And the size is also 27. Cool. And what we can see is, hey, we get already our informations, right? Perfect. So now we style it a little bit and give it a text style with the size of, uh, let's say, 100. That's uh, a bit too big. Let's make it 64 and getting Christchurch here. And the same thing we do with the temperature. And uh, so we give it a style, text style font size of let's, uh, 64 and now I would like to surround the text of the weather I will do it like that and because ah, that is not quite correct we have a string and we interpolate it with that and say 
and we add a degree sign and Celsius. And now we have that nice little thing. But at the end, we want to have everything centered. And because it is a column, we have to give a main axis alignment of center. And voila, we have the city name, we have the temperature, and we have a sun if it's warm enough. And let's change that to my hometown and reload the whole thing. There it should be cold right now, it's winter. We have the cloud. Cool. All right, so that's it. And with that, we have managed to make a network request. We checked our application if there is, um, if we have good weather, if we have bad weather. We have checked our application with the future builder that we have um, some data, or if we have an error, or we ha I have no values at all. So whenever I reload the application, we see first our loading indicator, and after two seconds, we should see now our progress. So the last thing that we have still to do is to wrap all of that in an own widget because I don't like it that everything lives inside of the future builder, makes that whole thing already a little messy. So what we can do is we take all of that stuff and create inside of our lib folder a new package and we call it widgets because it's just a part of our screen, we call it widgets creating a widget and call it weather data widget. And that weather data widget is a stateless widget and we call it weather data widget. Import the material library and return exactly what we had before. But now we have to provide an input we call it weather, weather, make the whole thing final, import the model, create a constructor. So you see, I use the alt, um, the alt key a lot. So wherever I can remove some useless stuff that we don't need anymore. We receive already the weather, but the home screen complains now because it doesn't return anything. We take the weather data widget and provide the weather, which is the weather. And because the naming is similar, I compress alt control, uh, sorry, option, command, and M. And with that, I inline the whole thing. As you can see now, the snapshot data is immediately inside, so we don't have to provide anything else. And with that, we have the possibility to add all this stuff, and you can see that we have the weather data. All right, so we did it. Uh, on the right side, you can see now our final application of our weather app. We used the future builder to receive our data, we used our future builder to receive our errors and uh, react accordingly to it. And in the final step, we also showed a loading indicator to show the users all three behaviors that could possibly go uh, or happen. And with that, we are coming to an end for this episode. Thank you so much for joining us today. Up there, you find the two videos, as always, that you could maybe find interesting. And on the right side, you can subscribe my channel. Thank you and till the next time. See ya.